What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis. And will Republicans and Democrats come to agreements on anything going on here in our country, even on what most Americans agree on, on the simplest things here with the mass shootings going on here every single day. Right now, there's more mass shootings here than we have days of the year. That's right. We have had, as you see here, over 250 mass shootings so far in 2022. And this was as of the beginning of this month. Yeah, and they consider a mass shooting with four or more people being shot in the shooting. Yeah, so this this has been going on here for a while. And really the legislation that they have come to a deal in the Senate with the Republican senators that they're going to maybe squeak by with a deal. Uh that polling shows that 70% of Americans think that enacting new gun control laws should take place. But really, what they want to do, the only thing they could get past and actually get 10 Republican votes out of 50 Republican senators in the Senate, is very, very minor. We're talking about things like raising the age uh, limit where you can actually buy an assault rifle uh, from age 18 to age 21. I mean, we're not talking, even Senator Joe Manchin, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin said that current gun owners would not have any rights taken away from them at all. And uh, we talked about uh, another thing is expanding background checks. Um, let me show you here. So here's what it says. The proposal, which has not been written into legislative text, that's one of the keys here, includes money to encourage states encourage states to pass and implement so-called red flag laws. That could be a huge problem. Encourage states to remove guns from potentially dangerous people. Money for school safety and mental health resources. Expand background checks for gun purchases for people only between the age of 18 and 21. And penalties for illegal straw purchases by convicted criminals. That's it. That's it. Here is what Republican Congressman Fred Upton has to say on this deal. Check this out. I uh, want to turn to guns. A bipartisan group in the Senate is trying to lock down a compromise deal, but funding for uh, state red flag laws and eliminating the so-called boyfriend loophole do remain sticking points for Republicans. Congress leaves for recess in a week. Do you think a deal is still gettable? I sure hope so. Um, we talked to, so I'm a, a vice chair of the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus. We had a Zoom meeting uh, last week with a, a couple of senators. They brought us up to speed where they were. Frankly, I thought by now we'd have the legislative agreement since they agreed in principle uh, a week ago. Uh, the, as you said, the Senate's going to be out as the House will be at the end of this week. I'm hoping that they get close. Uh, those are the two sticking points. And should they get the votes to get it done? Uh, I, I think that the House will take it up or immediately when we come back. But haven't had an update in the last 48 hours, but I know that they're getting close. And, you know, it's frankly, it's common sense. Uh, law abiding folks uh, shouldn't have any fears in terms of what's what's going on. Uh, it's it's been a rallying point, particularly for the NRA and the gun owners of America. You look at their website and they're like raising cash like you mm -hmm. wouldn't believe in terms of their Second Amendment rights of being taken away. No, that's not what's happening here. This is some common sense stuff, but it's it's been elevated for sure, when, particularly when you have some pretty well-respected Republicans, uh, whether it be a, a John Cornyn or a Dan Crenshaw, literally being accosted at their state conventions in Texas this weekend. Yeah, so here's the problem. 70%, even some polls show even higher, 70% uh, of Americans want 
to have some type of new regulations to end gun violence, and yet, you can see here, no deal to end gun violence. <sighs> yeah, check this out. Lawmakers remain far apart on the most important gun safety issues now under debate in Congress, a Republican senator said here on Sunday, casting doubts on hopes that the United States could pass the first federal gun legislation in decades. And remember, the stuff they're passing in this is very, very minor stuff. My, I mean, there's some stuff in there for 18 to 21 year olds. I mean, there's not. Very much stuff in there. Utah Republican Senator Mike Lee told Fox News here that the issue that we have here is that we don't have a bill yet. That's because they're trying to come to the agreement with the Republicans and Democrats before they craft the bill. There's no reason to craft the bill if they don't have what they're going to agree to. He says, I, I keep asking to see the text, and it's apparent they, in fact, don't have a deal at all. If you don't have a deal, you can't write the bill. It totally makes sense. Lawmakers have been under pressure to reduce gun violence after two major mass shootings last month. We all know there's a lot more than two mass shootings, but these were the ones that made major headlines in Buffalo, New York, and Uvalde, Texas. Last week, Republican John Cornyn, the lead Republican negotiator in the U.S., walked out of the talks. That's right. He walked out of the talks while the lead Democrats remain optimistic that lawmakers could vote on the legislation before leaving for their July 4th recess. Now, here's here's one of the problems. There's, there's several problems with this. All the Democrats, this is likely the way the vote's going to go down. All the Democrats in the Senate the Democrats can pass the bill in the House on their own. In fact, the Democrats passed the bill in the House on gun uh, legislation, you know, gun reform, like a, a week or two ago. And all the Democrats, except for like one or two, there's like 208 Democrats or something in the House. They all voted yes, except for one or two. And like almost like 99% of the Republicans voted no. That That's the problem here. Okay. They're all just voting no. Okay. Even though 70% of the United States citizens, poll after poll after poll, the polls fluctuate a little bit. Okay. Each poll is different. Obviously, they're not polling every single American in the, in the whole country, 330 million Americans. But there's, you know, there's polls literally happening almost every day on this type of stuff, on Roe versus Wade. And they're doing polls on thousands of Americans. You know, I'll, I'll see comments in the in the comment section say, well, I didn't get polled. Of course they're not. They didn't poll 330 million Americans. But, the, you know, each poll will be several thousand Americans. And when they do that large of amount, they have a uh, enough sample size that it gives a pretty accurate number. Especially when you see poll after poll after poll after poll, and you combine those, then you get a really, really accurate number. So when you see like this polls at 70% and this polls at 69% and this polls at 71% and this polls at 68%, you can average them together and see they're all pretty accurate. You can pretty much see, well, that's the, that's the number. You, you know they're close enough, right? Um, especially when you you know start to calculate it all together, you, you have a really good idea, okay? And a lot of the... A lot of the polls, or almost all the polls, will break it down between Democrats and Republicans. And it's something like way, almost all the Democrats want it. And even 50, it's like 50 50 on the Republicans. Even 50% of the Republicans want some gun reform. So, yeah, it's, it's weird how this is a political issue. Um, it's just kind of weird. And I get the whole that. Um, Owning a gun is, a, is an American issue. It, it's a it's a right to bear arms. I totally get that, but we're not talking about taking them away from every American. But what we are talking about is like assault rifles. By the way, they're not banning those at all. That's not even on the table because 
they can't get the votes for it. So <laughs> remember that the first bill they tried to pass in the House, 99% of the Republicans all voted no. There's literally it's just a mass way they all just voted no. And the other problem is, is that um, the NRA, the National Rifle Association, literally sponsors like <laughs> a vast majority of the Republicans, especially in the Senate. So there's like like conflict of interest is really, really kind of there. I mean, like Mitt Romney, who's actually willing to vote for the bill, I actually commend him there. And again, I'm not from either party. I'm just kind of looking at this realistic. It's, you got to kind of really think about the word conflict of interest here, especially when we look at other issues. And again, I'm not Republican or Democrat. And we'll think about another issue where we're not thinking about Republican or Democrat like the pharmaceutical industry, the USA pays two and a half times more than any other country for pharmaceutical drugs, okay? And um, these are for the same prescription drugs that are sold in other countries by the same companies. So say Pfizer makes a, you know, a prescription drug XYZ, right? They'll sell, they'll sell that same prescription drug XYZ in another country and on average, we still pay two and a half times more. So let's say they sell a drug for um, $100 over there. They'll sell it to the Americans for $250. It's literally just a price gouge. It's just a price gouge. And they, it happens here because if Congress won't pass anything. Because when it comes up for votes, guess what happens? It just doesn't pass. So you kind of think about conflict of interest. And like lobbyists and like corporations with billions of dollars and like and like you can look it up, just Google Republicans paid for by uh, by the NRA, and there's just literally dozens and dozens of them. And like when you see like the, a bill trying to pass, seventy percent of Americans want some type of gun reform, and then you realize that the NRA is is paying for votes it's it's kind you gotta kind of wonder conflict of interest like how could you not and then you kind of now realize how it's republican democrat thing and, and the propaganda stuff it's just kind of weird so like first of all like taking guns away like it would never happen like it's just just so far off the scope of that would never happen it's just like not even realistic right um but like the bill that they even have on the table is just like so weak. It's like, if they can't get that passed, there's just no help for anything to get passed. I mean, it's really just, it's like a, it's just like the, and, and then like the Republicans that are even willing to vote for it are getting like major, major slack from their own supporters. And, the, and some of these guys like John Cornyn, and Mitch McConnell are like ultra Republican, <laughs> like ultra, you know, right Republicans. And I'm like, I mean, they even they realize that like something's got to be done. We're the only country in the world that has this issue. And again, we're not talking about taking your guns away. We're talking about like something's got. It, it's it's the same thing when we go back to the seatbelt issues. Back when they made seatbelts a law to wear seatbelts, there was a time when they it wasn't a law. Guess what? There was a, 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 a population of the people, a certain portion of the people, that didn't want it to happen. They said it takes away our freedom. It takes away our rights. We shouldn't be forced to wear a seatbelt. Um, but everybody said, but it's killing people. It's killing babies it's killing children it's it and, and people and children dying in cars was the number one killer of kids kids dying in cars and so there was a large movement of saying we need change we have to pass something we have to pass something and people fought it and fought it and say you're taking away our rights you shouldn't have to force us to wear a seatbelt does this sound familiar and eventually they got it passed and and you had to fight the whole you're taking away our rights people and 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 now you kind of think about it it says well wow imagine if we didn't have 
imagine if people weren't forced to wear seatbelts. And you think people, a lot of people don't wear seatbelts today, but if they get in a crash, they, they're obviously much more at risk because they could smash into this to the to the windshield, you know, et cetera, et cetera. They could literally go out of the car. All these things, right? And you got to think about also back in the day, children didn't even have car seats. And yeah, you always you always hear that, you know, that old age old saying that, well, our kids survived and, you know, we were okay. You know, when we were kids, we played with, you know, we drank out of the hose and we played in the mud. But if you actually look up the statistics, way more kids died in car accidents back then. And I get that we all survived. I mean, I'm 41 years old. I grew up in 81, or I was born in 81. I lived through the 80s. You know, they're at, I don't even know if they had car seats back then. They were really rudimentary. But um, you, you got to remember that um, all this stuff, all this safety stuff, when you look at car seats now, they were all made for a reason. You know, we, we've learned throughout the years that we have to have some type of safety measure so that children don't continue to die in cars and so that children don't continue to get shot in schools. And now, so like when I went to school, they didn't have lock, the, the doors didn't lock automatically. Uh, you'll also probably remember when you used to be able to walk into an airport and go and pick up uh, people at the airport. And um, now you can't do that. Now you can't just walk into an airport and meet somebody uh, right when they get off the plane. Now we have airport security, right? Um, my wife, uh, when she was a little girl, her mom used to take her to the airport and she used to just walk in there and go watch the planes land. You can't do that now. Airport security. Things have changed. But you could also argue, oh, that takes away my rights. Again, when it comes to saving people's lives and airport security and, you know, car security and gun safety, you know, things change because we've realized that things have just got to be a little different. When you think about the Constitution and stuff, I mean, those guys that signed that document 200 years ago, I mean, things were just totally different back then. They didn't have assault rifles. They didn't have computers. They didn't have. They didn't even have phones. They didn't have cell phones. They weren't talking on YouTube. I mean, it was just a totally different world back then. You know, even the people who uh, invented the assault rifle said that they're they're disgusted with the way they're being used today. They weren't intended for to be used against children. So. And again, they're, the bill that's being <laughs> proposed in the Senate that may not even pass literally isn't even banning assault rifles. It's not even on the table. Like the things they're doing is so minimal. It's just so minimal. It's a baby step. And if if they pass this, even if they've had, they may not even pass this. There's going to be literally millions of people say it's not enough. The shootings are going to continue. It might it might cut off a sliver of of shooting. It will still save lives. It will still save lives. But that's all they're even able to pass right now, guys, because they just can't get the votes. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. And then we also got Roe vs. Wade coming up. That's going to be also a very, very big changing uh, thing for our country. Yeah, so let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our countries. Make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so. This way you won't miss out on new videos. After subscribing, click the bell icon so you get notifications when we go live. And I will keep you up to date here with everything. You can click here to watch my newest video next. And you can click here to see new checks that are going out to multiple states that were just announced. Definitely click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.